Welcome to the March 10th regular meeting of the Hopkins School Committee. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we're going to start tonight with recognitions, then we'll have our first opportunity for public comments, followed by reports to the School Committee. For new business, we have the before and after school program, the YMCA renewal, food service management contract, also um, a renewal, Hopkins School and High School Roof Designer Selection, budget transfer requests, capital project article warrants, paraprofessional request, two paraprofessional requests, and the middle school stateside overnight approval. Then we'll have old business, which is school committee policy IHAMB, followed by our second opportunity for public comment and then items by consensus. Dr. McLeod, can we start with recognitions? We can start with recognitions. Well, I need, I guess I can pick up that one. I don't know how far it goes. So tonight, I am delighted to recognize our middle school robotics team. And I see that many of you are here tonight. You're going to get to come up here in front of the camera. You have some very exciting things to tell us about, about your team and the accomplishments that you have under your belts already in just your first season. Uh, we're very excited about some things that are going on, and we're actually going to ask the school committee to approve a field trip um, that you're going to tell us a little bit more about. So that's why we thought it was perfect that you'd be here tonight. Um, I'd like to introduce Doug Scott. If you could come up here, Mr. Scott. And is Amy here? Amy, could you come on up too? And, um, and Blake Dobay, could you come on up too? So Mr. Scott is our uh, subject matter leader uh, for the engineering department. Um, his, his responsibilities include the middle school. And uh, he has been working this year with Amy Borges, who is our grade six through eight technology teacher here at the middle school. Um, and they are joined by assistant coach Blake Dobay, who is a high school senior and is on the high school robotics team, correct, Blake? Have you been on that for a couple of years? And has volunteered his time to help our middle school students. Um, and we know that, that it's always really great for middle school students to be able to be coached by a high school student. Um, that's, that's always a, an exciting opportunity. So I'm not going to say any more than that. I'm going to turn it over to your coaches and your teachers to talk about your team and what you've done. And then we're going to call all of you up here um, to congratulate you. OK? Thank you. I'll be brief, and I'll turn it over to uh, Amy Borges in one moment. Uh, just a quick word. Uh, just a, a great honor, and, and we thank the school committee and Dr. McLeod for having us out tonight. Uh, in its first year, the Robo Hillers group of uh, Hopkins Middle School has done a fantastic job. Uh, they received an excellence award at uh, BU uh, competition, and then they won the state title. And not only did they win it, but they were ranked number one at the end of the day in all categories and received the excellence award, which is the top overall team, which includes judging categories as well as uh, ranking for the day. So they did a fantastic job. Uh, you have two very selfless people uh, next to me. We have Amy Borges, who is an employee of and teacher here at the middle school and does a fantastic job. And she's donated her time uh, every Thursday for two hours, plus weekend trips to competitions to uh, help support the students. <coughs> Coach Dobe uh, approached me at the high school this year and said that he was not able to do robotics at the high school this year. And, and I said, well, then maybe there's an opportunity to do something special this year. We're starting up a program at the middle school which will carry up to the high school in the future. And uh, I asked him if he was interested, and he's been here as well at competitions as well. So provides his time to the kids. Uh, to the students as well, these are students that donate their time. Uh, this is their choice to do this, and they put together a great effort, as well as the parents. These are the parents that travel with the kids and support them. Uh, with that, what I'm going to do is just turn it over to, uh, to Coach Borges. She can Thank speak you. about the kids and the team. Thank you. 
So I'm so proud of all of your hard work and dedication, and it's been very exciting to be doing this with you guys, and we're all very excited to go to Kentucky. <laughs> so I'll read names of students who are participating in the team. And then Victoria Allen, Joe Abbott, Brandon Belmonte, Sean Cahill, Vincent DiNicola, Nan Dixit, Jacob Dugas Costa, Nathan Foster, Liam Hartson, John Zay Khan, Josh Krimgold, Eric Letus, Aiden Morin, Kurtesh Rajanagan, Sreya Ravi, Katie Sherfius, Sankalp Subendu, Eric Sullivan, Kevin Wang, and Grace Young. Can you tell us a little bit about the project that won you all these accolades? Mommy? Choose some of the kids, maybe. Oh, mommy. We are going to do that. Um. We're hot. We're hot. Yeah. We've been working on building a robot for the Vex IQ Challenge, which um, involves getting. Um, balls over like a low wall and shooting them into a basket and knocking them off a ramp. And we get different points for those. And um, if we get a lot of points, we win that part. And then there's also different components, like the STEM research. We have a project for that. And well, we want to know all about that. Tell us more about STEM research. <laughs> We're doing STEM research on the Big Bang and what happened, how it was caused. Really cool. Yeah, well, if somebody else wants to talk. Yep. We have to um, research the topic and then present how we how we um, like use the information. Yeah. Mm hmm. And we present it to the judges. So they're they're judging you not only on your topic, but on also on how you go about getting the answer. Yeah. Correct. So why? How is it that you won the competition that you re recently went to? You were first place. What what made you better than everybody else? Okay, Josh. Josh wins that one. So we won the competition uh, because. Uh, like, in the beginning, we had this complex robot, uh, with, like, something that'd pick up the balls, and we scrapped it. We just <laughs> picked it up and chucked it. <laughs> we did it right in the beginning. Right before we got there, we're, we picked it up and threw, threw it, just took it off. Then, so we were left with basically just a, just a driving just a chassis that would just and what we did is we had it it was really small and stable yeah. it had a low center of gravity so we could simply just go onto the ramp and you got a lot of points from knocking the balls off the ramp and parking on the ramp so, and since our robot was so small we could the other robot could park on too no matter how big so we got like 46 points every single time wow we went on so that's how Just that was our strategy well for being willing to start from nothing right mm, and yeah. make it make it simple make it well mr dumas do you have any questions about I, that i think we should hear from the young man with the hat okay <laughs> <laughs> it's fun it's fun. What were you coaching, though? You were just helping your friend by telling him some <laughs> other information about... That the robot was called Pushbot 5000. Pushbot. Bob. 
Push bot five thousand. Got it. Cool. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to, to us to know about your team and about what you've learned being on on the robotics in the robotics club? Anybody else wants to say anything while you're on camera? Oh, Mr. Question. Graziano has so a question. I, as mentioned earlier, we have a, a, f a field trip to approve later for a competition in Kentucky. I'd love to hear more about what that is and what you're going to be doing down there. Competition in Kentucky is called the World Championships. Countries for around the world would be coming to compete in it. And we literally do the same thing as we did in other competitions. And so the winning team would be win earning like $5,000 for STEM for like next year's Vex IQ challenge. So our goal is, try ultimate goal is to try to win it, but we're also trying to gain experience from it as well. I think that, like, it's mainly going to be we go there, there's a lot of other countries, but, like, it's on, it's more like a field trip and a vacation, but in it, we are having a lot of fun because we're putting in our robot uh, to compete, so, and I think that's really going to be cool. And it's just, uh, it's just worldwide. So. so I have one more question, and anybody can answer it. And the question is, what have you learned about being a member of a team? Um, I think that being a member of a team means that um, you have to rely on other people to get your work done. And in our team, we are all s like divided into different parts that get different jobs done and we all have to depend on each other so I see so yeah, I do the website for our team and so I have to rely on people like Katie over here and Sean because they do things like they get everyone connected and they can get like the news out if I have something to say to everyone but then people like the build team who actually actually physically built the wo robot have to communicate to people like the programming team who program the robot and I think we've all just learned that a team is made up of individuals who have to rely on each other. That is an excellent excellent, excellent answer. answer. Thank you so much. The teams that we're divided into are like positions in football or basketball. True. It's you do it to help the team win. Yep. That's a good comparison. Well, thank you guys. We are so proud of you. That's why you're here. It's very special to be invited to a school committee meeting um, because we're just really excited about everything that you're doing. But also, I've really enjoyed he listening to all of you talk about what you've been learning already as being part of a team. So it's great that you won, and but it's also great that you're learning all these really important life lessons. So thanks for being here. And have, we'll hear all about Kentucky when you get back. If the school committee go. proves it, we'll just <laughs> <laughs> have to see. I would like to thank uh, Alan Keller, who, who I don't think is here right now. But uh, Alan, w we put Alan on the spot this year. And we showed up kind of late in the year and said, can we start a robotics club and, he, and can we have some money? <laughs> and he was, so he was, yeah. <laughs> he was very strategic and, and did his best to put together some money to help fund the team. So uh, we're really thankful to Alan for, for taking a chance on us. So thank you. Very good. Yeah, that, why don't, uh, do you want me to take it? And then he could be in it? Awesome. Right. Kids. <laughs> Good luck in Good Kentucky. Luck. <laughs> See what this work is all awesome. about. Yep. Yeah. Right. You're a lot more capable than I am. That was great. <laughs>
always good to hear the kids, you know, it? with a microphone. Remember that show that used to be on the yeah, yeah. Art, art newsletter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kids say the darndest yeah. things. So we, um, it's time for public comment. I don't know if there's any anyone here that's here for public comment. Want me to ask? Want me to ask, or you just want to move on? We're gonna move on. Um. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So reports to the school committee. I don't think we have anyone here from student council. We've just never had so many people here. Um, liaison reports. Are there any liaison reports? Uh, I think we already talked about Chris Heron is a week from today, right? Um, that's that's my only one. Don't you want to recognize girls basketball? Well, well I'm not a liaison to it, but oh. I certainly <laughs> like, where's I'm that? a little short, but um, yeah, the girls basketball they well they lost last night. But, but they, they got to the semifinals. They got to the semifinals, and the boys' hockey team is playing as we speak in Bourne. Um, in the, I think in the semifinals also. So, yeah, sports are still continuing. The kids are doing And I think the cheerleaders just won the state tournament as well. So a lot of great results in, uh, in our winter sports. Okay. So I met with the Irvine Todaro Property Committee, or they met. We, we met for the first time. Um, there are seven people on the committee and three abutters and then um, four members of other committees and we elected a chair which was Alton Chen and a vice chair which is John Catino um, it was a two-hour meeting so clearly a lot happened I just don't I don't have much to report other than we elected the chair we're going to seek input from other committees, hopefully, on what they're looking to do with the property. But that sort of, I guess, parlays into the school committee chair report, which um, where we went to the board of selectmen and um, we presented our budget on Monday, um, Tuesday rather. And in that meeting, of most interest, it seemed, you know, so our operating budget I think was well received, and we. It was approved. There were no um, outstanding questions or anything that we had to um, return to them with respect to information on the operating budget. They did have questions with respect to our some capital items, and those included the bus parking lot, turf field, and, and I guess there was one outstanding, just um, general question about getting safety. back to them. Um, oh, safety, that was capital item. But with respect to the operating budget, they had asked Dr. McLeod to get back to them on Retention. Retention for um, teachers who's non who have non-professional staff. So how long do they stay or do they leave during that first three-year period? It was a payroll question. It was a question that was related to the fact that we were acknowledging that the, the biggest, obviously, portion of our budget has to do with personnel. And so their question around retention, how do we keep good teachers and what are, what are the, our practices around evaluation? Um, and so that was a question that they had asked that we re respond. May I add that they, they also recognized the process and really appreciated the opportunity to be part of our meetings. Um, and both, both, both of our liaison members, Mr. Mosier and Mr. Herr, commented um, at the thoroughness of the process and complimented the school, school committee on, on your budget process, and <coughs> which resulted in, in them having no questions. Um, and with, so with respect to capital items that they had um, <coughs> questions on or follow-up items, one is the turf fields and that is um, what's the planning design process and we sh and their recommendation that they, one, would support it and they want us to put it forward, but two, they want it to be the football field. And so that's something that Dr. McLeod will be investigating and working on with yep. a team at the high school. I have a follow-up meeting scheduled to include Gail, um, <coughs> the AD, Mr. Mosier, has, not Mr. Mosier, Mr. Herr, um, as one of our liaisons because the question came from him um, in terms of why can't it be the football field and there are some limitations around the fact that the track is there. Um, but we do have a follow-up <coughs> meeting scheduled with that group. Um, who have been tasked with the design phase um, of the eventual solution. So they 
wanted to know from us what are the what what options are being considered and so that's what we'll we'll have a follow-up meeting and we'll we'll report back to the school committee on what we find out and the other item was the bus parking lot which um, as the board of selectmen put it I think sort of collectively that it's a no-brainer the cost to put a gravel lot in um, with respect to the return we should absolutely do it um, the only thing I responded with was well we've got this whole committee that would like to decide what to do with that property and they did not seem to think that was a hurdle in continuing on the path forward to get the parking lot approved if yes. I could just add something uh, that's germane to that in in light of the possibility of having the new parking lot uh, even though we still have two years to go on the bus uh, contract we ha those are two option years and I think a few months ago we had talked about maybe going back out to bid again we're currently out to bid uh, the bids will open at the end of March so at the first meeting in April we'll have a recommendation one way or the other because it'll be three years with a two-year option that might the timing might play better with regard to uh, having a, a bus parking lot at the end of that three-year mm -hmm. period okay so so when we did the bid did we communicate that we had the potential of a bus parking lot and uh, seeing what it would no impact th th this is just well the way that the contract uh, the bid specs read currently the current and the the new is that in the event that we have a parking lot that the uh, contractor agrees to sit down and negotiate with us but what we're really looking at is ending a bus contract just as we have the new parking lot so that no negotiation would be necessary it would be factored into delivered uh, in the bid that's correct yeah thank you um so I think that's it for the liaison report and chair report on my behalf do you have a superintendent report? the only other thing oh. I wanted to add to my report um, in terms of I, I guess it's another recognition but really it, it I had the opportunity last night um, to attend the seventh grade concert night I saw you um, and and I I was struck by three things in that in the concert the first was the breadth of opportunities available to our students within the music program I was really struck and I know that there's been tremendous support from the school committee over time for our music program, for the arts program, and for our athletic program. And one of the things that we talked about at the Board of Selectmen meeting was, you know, in terms of the budget and new initiatives and the fact that it keeps growing, um, is that we, we're very proud of the opportunities in this town that we provide for kids. Here's another example um, of, of this robotics team and, and we see what it brings out in students. So the first thing was the breadth of opportunities. The second was the talent of our students. Um, and then the third was the rate at which the teachers have been able to increase their skills. I, I participated in a music program all through high school, um, and I know what we sound like at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and what amazed me was the numbers of kids playing together and making a wonderful sound only at seventh grade. And, and you see where they go to later on. Um, but the, the amount of discipline that that requires is tremendous. And I, I've, I've reached out to the directors to, to say all of these things directly to them, but I think that when you go to one of those concerts and you sit back and you enjoy <laughs> the music, you don't really understand what it takes to be able to have kids be able to perform at that level. And um, I ran into, into Bruce Elliott, actually, who was there um, because his daughter plays trombone in the seventh grade band. And, um, you know, his comment was just that, that she comes home and, and reports that, that the teachers are strict. And I looked at him and I said, well, can you imagine being any, anything but? Because the, you've got to have discipline and you've got to have kids to be able to follow directions. And, and even that, what a wonderful opportunity. We're hearing kids talking about what it means to be part of a team. And it's the same thing as being part of an orchestra or a band or a chorus. Um, it was it was tremendous. I was I was so happy to be there and so proud of the work taking place in this district in all sorts of different ways. So um, that that was that was it for my my report. Other than I was going to call out um, the the teams basketball and hockey and cheerleading. Oh, and I just I'm I'm reminded since you said mentioned Bruce Elliott about the wellness fair which was Saturday. And oh, I should have right. mentioned that which yeah. was 
really outstanding as always. Um, he really he did a phenomenal job putting together a great wellness fair. That it was really packed, and the PTA I think sponsors the summer camp they were, fair yeah. at the same time. So. Um, there was an SNAKE that was there that was across the room from yes, me. Yes, I heard about yeah. that. I, I yeah. stayed more closer to Wonder the Greyhound Dogs. Wonder who you're spelling for. Because I <laughs> can't even say it. But, um, no, it was it was great. The kids were having a great time, really engaged. Whitson's was there with – not Whitson's. What's our – Whitson's. Yeah. Was there with um, – with food, and it, it, they did a tremendous job. So I wanted to make sure that we recognized them for that. Okay, so um, the first item in new business is the before and after school program of YMCA renewal. For consideration is the request and recommendation of that the superintendent, I'm sorry, that the school committee exercise its option to renew the contract with the YMCA for a second year beginning in September of 2016. Do you have a motion before you? Are there any comments or questions on the motion? I would seek a motion to approve the recommendation of the superintendent to renew the contract with the YMCA for a second year beginning in September of 2016. Second. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous. So carried. Um, next item of new business is the food service management contract. For our consideration is the request and recommendation that the school committee exercise its option to renew the contract with Whitsons for a second year beginning in September of 2016. There is a recommended motion before you. Are there any comments or questions on the motion? Okay, I would seek a motion to approve the recommendation of the superintendent to renew the contract with Whitsons for a second year beginning in September of 2016. So moved. Motion by Ms. Knight. Oh, sorry. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. Yes, yes it's unanimous. Can, so can I, sorry, can I also just recognize again that how impressed I am by the partnership that Whitson's has showed, especially with recent inquiries. We noted the wellness fair. I actually saw um, our food service director. There was a table for the folks who were building awareness about non-GMO and organic um, lunch options. Um, and he, I saw him proactively engaging with that um, table and they were exchanging ideas um, they've just done a tremendous job in communicating with the community especially around this issue and being creative That's and great. trying to see what they can do so I'm, I'm more than happy to renew this contract because I think it's been very impressive Thank you, John. and the good ketchup came back oh, it, it well, did <laughs> the, their customer service is outstanding <laughs> I thought it was like that I'm taking school? credit for that, that yeah. your <laughs> <laughs> there you go <laughs> this no, night schools, <laughs> you can like, take I have credit made, I have made an impact all those nights when you're out and they wonder why it was the really good fun. ketchup came just back. To just to get the ketchup. <laughs> Next up is the Hopkins School and High School Roof Designer Selection. Um, for our consideration is the request and recommendation that the school committee award the contract to Gail Associates of Weymouth and authorize the administration to sign a contract in the amount of $87,000. There is a motion before you. Are there any comments or questions on the motion? Okay, I would seek a motion to award the contract and authorize the administration to take the appropriate steps to sign a contract with Gale Associates of Weymouth in the amount of $87,000. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. Yes, yes. it's unanimous and so carries. Okay, for consideration, um, next are the budget transfers, the request and recommendation that the school committee approve the budget transfers as outlined in the documentation. Um, do you, sorry, I, I was moving. Um, there's recommended motion before you. Does anyone have any comments or questions on the motion? And does anyone want to speak in detail about the budget transfers? Do you want to provide any? Background, Mr. Dumas. There's no questions, Penny. No. We, we are we are smooth <laughs> sailing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm no, just kidding. Um, I, I think it's self-explanatory. Did you did you receive any questions that you want to address for the whole committee, or no. we're good? Okay. It's worth noting again. I mean, we talk about this a lot at. Well, the sorry, there was one. But the um, but this this again reflects that the extreme budget driver that we have every year in terms of, of special ed costs. As mm -hmm. I went through line by line, almost all of the large-scale pluses fall into those categories. Mm -hmm. So 
um, you know, as we talk about budgeting and the challenges of it, these are the great unknowns, as we'll see later in the agenda, too. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. sorry, I didn't want to break your rhythm. But no, no, no problem. You, you, you broke it <laughs> already <laughs> tonight. I know, know. seriously. <laughs> so, uh, I would seek a motion to approve the budget transfers as outlined in the agenda materials. Second. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. yes, unanimous, and so carries. Next, <coughs> excuse me, item of new business is capital project article warrant number 16-045 in the amount of $10,531. For our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent for payment of the invoice for capital project invoices appropriated in articles 14F, 24, and 26. There is a motion before you. Are there any comments or questions on, sorry, the recommended motion? Okay, I would seek a motion to approve the payment of warrant number 16-045 in the amount of $10,531 to the vendor as outlined in the warrant. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. Yes, yes. unanimous and so carries. Um, Next is our, for our consideration, is the request and recommendation of the superintendent for an additional one FTE paraprofessional to meet the needs of a recently registered elementary student based on the needs as dictated by that student's IEP. Before we do the next two items, um, I just would like to add for the benefit of the school committee, I know you keep getting these requests. And obviously these requests first come to me. And the first thing I do is, is ensure that every other possibility has been uh, looked at in terms of staffing but more than that I want you to know that I'm working with Dr. Zaleski as well as an outside consultant who is in turn working with our team chairs to look at how we can carefully assess the needs of our students um, in a way that will provide we're not looking for a reduction in force what we're looking to do is to be able to have the flexibility to provide the serve the the support students need when they need it and the way that we're writing um, student paraprofessional needs into IEPs ties our hands until the annual review. Um, the consultant has provided recent research with us as well as a different way of looking at articulating the need in a way that provides flexibility, for example, by not calling out a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one, -one, but rather that the student is supported by a paraprofessional as needed. And that work is taking place now. The requests that are before you for tonight are uh, as the ones that you got um, last month are until the end of June um, because this is when this work we will have the culmination of this work and we'll be able to move forward in a different way come fall um, th the reason I feel so strongly about this is that I don't believe it's best it's the best thing for students I think that when we encourage dependency uh, what we should be doing is is really working to increase independence and um, I think that th as you have experienced this year and last year, our, our needs are constantly changing. These two little ones absolutely legitimately need the one-to-one the, the -one support. But our hope is that over time that would be reduced because the student is being more and more successful within the general classroom where there's also additional support. So I wanted to say that so that you know that we are still we're not just blindly continuing to ask for people. We are looking at how we can do our work more efficiently, but most importantly, provide kids with the adequate amount of support um, as, opposed to too, as opposed to too much. So I say that before you. we ask you to vote on these. And, and one of the things that's not in the motion is the funding source. Can we talk Sorry. about that? Uh, there is money available in the salary reserve uh, to cover two But that's not in the budget transfers tonight. No, it's not. So it'll be in a subsequent one? It'll be once we know yeah. who they are, when they're going to start. Start. Okay. And what they're going to pay, then we'll come to you. Thank you. Yep. So, sorry about that. That's okay. So, with respect to the first um, paraprofessional request, are there any comments or questions? So, the recommended, uh, I would seek a motion to approve the addition of one FTE paraprofessional for the recently registered elementary student. Second. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. Yes, yes. unanimous, and so carries. The next paraprofessional request is for our consideration 
recommendation of the superintendent for an additional one FTE for a paraprofessional to meet the increased needs of a center school student. There's a recommended motion before you. Are there any comments or questions on the motion? Seek a motion to approve the addition of the one FTE paraprofessional to meet the increased needs of the center school student. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Okay. Unanimous, so carries. Next is, um, <clears throat> for our consideration, is the request and recommendation of the superintendent to approve an overnight travel request for the robotics team to go to Kentucky. The dates of the trip are April 20th to April 23rd. During April vacation. Are there any comments or questions on the motion or request? I was going to say, it feels like it's really tough to say no at this point. <laughs> no, no setup at all. <laughs> um, before I set you up for that, though, um, is that um, we we did, Mr. Mr. Keller um, and I um, worked with Mr. Scott to ensure that we had access to the program for as many students as, as wanted to attend. Um, because we understood that not a, not every parent would be able to. We talked about the supervision. I shared with you the background questions that we had. Um, many families are making it into a vacation. Um, we have our high school student who I get, had concern about his supervision. His mom's going. Um, so it, it's really been a collaborative effort to make this a, something that's accessible because typically something like this would not be. Um, and so I, I felt relatively um, comfortable setting it up this way because I knew that they, they had really um, sought to make sure that, the, it, that it was something that the team could um, attend. So. so we seek your approval on that. So there's a recommended motion before you. Um, I take a motion <laughs> to approve the overnight travel request for the robotics team to Kentucky from April 20th to April 23rd. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous. And so carries. And then we have our right, one and only item of old business, which is School Committee Policy IHAMB and IHAMB E1, Sex Education. This is our second reading. I had no further emails on this. Did, did you, Mr. Graziano? Or would it have gone to you, the questions on policy? No? Oh. Um, it would have gone to me. Oh, wait. Apologize. And no what's that? No worries, he said. Okay. Did you get it? I had other? one question um, that I sent to Mr. Keller. It was a curriculum question. Okay. Um, nothing really related to the policy and the procedure, just a curriculum question. Um, um, so as we discussed it, it made the, the changes were mainly around notification to ensure that what was written in policy was consistent with practice and the changes now make it consistent with what's happening in our practice, which is, I think, actually giving parents better notification than even our policy was requiring. There's a recommended motion before you to adopt policy IHAMB and IHAMB-E1 as amended. I'd seek a, someone to make the motion. Second. Motion by Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. yes, and this is so scary. There's no one here for public comment. I mean, maybe because we're like breezing along and it's yeah. just no way they would have expected coming. public we comment to be here now. <laughs> should um, we sit here for an hour in case yeah. anybody wants to come down? I think down. that's <laughs> definitely the right thing to do. Now we have items by <laughs> consensus. Dr. McCoy. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve the operating budget and other funds warrant number 16-044 in the amount of $181,870.18. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve the Elmwood School Student Activities Warrant number 16-046 in the amount of $2,570. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve the Middle School Student Activities Warrant number 16-047 in the amount of $32,819.90. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve the minutes of the special school committee meetings of April 9th. 2015 and December 10th, 2015, as indicated in the agenda materials. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve the minutes of the regular school committee meetings of May 28th, 2015, 
2015, June 18th, 2015, October 15th, 2015, October 22nd, 2015, and December 3rd, 2015, as indicated in the agenda materials. The superintendent recommends a school committee vote to approve $943.30 from General Mills Box Tops for Education program and $244 from the HPTA Spiritwear fundraiser be placed in the Hopkins School gift account as indicated in the agenda materials. The superintendent recommends a school committee vote to approve $2,000 from the $2,000 from the Sky's the Limit fundraiser and $1,309.85 from Target's Take Charge of Education program to be placed in the middle school gift account as indicated in the agenda materials. There was one amendment made to the minutes of December 10th. Yes, but there's just a one in front of Mr. And it was, that has been made, be, so before it is posted, it has been corrected. You're welcome. Thank you. So moved. Second. By Ms. Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Unanimous. And so carries. I will say before we move um, our seek motion for executive session, we did receive other communications with respect to meeting minutes, and um, the the way we responded was one to get a bunch on the agenda today, but also to um, submit those to the person who requested them in draft form. And in looking at the MGL. Um, I'm not sure what pa past practice has been, but it appears that even when the school committee appears at another board's meeting or at town meeting, we don't have to call, the, we can post it because we're all going to be there and there might be deliberation, but to the extent there isn't deliberation and everything we say is said at that public meeting that belongs to someone else, we don't have to do minutes. Um, <coughs> so I don't know if anyone has comments or questions about that, but I looked it up and then I spoke with the... Um, the MASC just to make sure I was on the right path. So now I would seek a motion to move into executive session to conduct a level three grievance hearing under the teachers collective bargaining agreement. So moved. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to do a roll call second. to enter into we'll need a, a motion. motion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. <laughs> motion by Miss Knight, second by Mr. Graziano. Miss Birchman. Yes. Mr. Graziano. Yes. Miss Knight. Yes. And I am a yes, and Miss Nickerson is absent. Do we need to say we won't be returning? We will return just for the. We will return to TV. Oh, we will. Okay. Yeah. Do you next meetings? So we'll return to do next meetings, but f I mean to adjourn. Um, but our next meetings are March twenty fourth, April seventh, and April twenty eighth. Thank you.